those proxies? Be right in, Charlie. Is this your first board meeting? Mm -hmm. What's your game plan? Impress them with your thrift? I'm going to tell them I spent every dime of last year's budget, and this year I'll need more. Mm. That's what Costello used to say. Who's Costello? Well, he was a city editor about a year ago. Let's see, three, four men before you. He burst into tears at the board meeting. <laughs> Yes, it's all coming together nicely, Mrs. Pinchon. Yeah, I'll make the motion Norman will second it. I got you. We'll be right up. I'll tell him he's here now. Tell me what? She'd rather you didn't cry. I don't intend to cry. Uh-huh. That's what Bannister said. Was he before or after Costello? I didn't know you knew Costello. Hey, by the way, did Mrs. Pinchon say anything to you about tonight? No. She will. I hope you didn't make any plans. Oh, just the usual. Preheat oven to 375, tear back foil, you know, one kick after another. Yeah, well, you'll have to do that tomorrow night. It's a big party tonight, the Publishers Association. Usually I escort Mrs. Pinchon, but I promised my wife I'd take her. Listen, why don't you take Mrs. Pinchon and I'll take your wife? Well, we don't go in for that sort of thing. Hey, listen, Lou, all you have to do is to bring her and take her home. She probably won't even talk to you. Sounds like a fun evening. Well, I think I have all the proxies here. Doesn't look like much. Well, wow. the little bits and pieces from the staff come to 9%. You add that to the percentage Mrs. Pinchon controls, and it becomes the edge she needs in the usual boardroom fight. What fight? Well, basically, we have two sides, the good guys and the bad guys. On one side, Mrs. Pinchon and her faction, formidable. 51% of the voting stock is on this side. Heading the opposition, her nephews Colin and Freddie, the Tweedledum and Tweedledee of greed. Mm. Mrs. Pinchon wins, you continue as city editor. If, however, the nephews have their way, you'll be managing either a string of taco stands or dry cleaning plants, whatever they decide to invest in when they sell the trip. Mrs. Pinchon, gentlemen, this quarter, rather than present our annual editorial budget in the usual way, I've invited Lou Grant, our new city editor, to make some prefacing remarks. Lou? Thank you. As you know, the newsroom financial budget... <clears throat> Would you uh, turn to page four, please? <clears throat> Thank you, Norman. You're welcome. Well, is broken into 15 categories. Uh, wire services, salaries, mileage, in-town expenses, travel. Uh, speaking of travel, Mr. Grant, I'd like to ask a question about this disbursement. Which one? $5,285 for a trip to Jamaica. That also included three white suits. What? Well, the suits belong to the company. Is this that time you got hoaxed? Spent 5000 and came up empty? We got a story. Not exactly the story we wanted. To me, this is just another example of why this newspaper is in such a poor performance posture. 
This marks the third consecutive quarter that we have not received a dividend on our shares. We have millions of dollars in assets that aren't throwing off any income. All we have to do is divert some of this money that's going to editorial. Now, there is a very attractive Mexican fast food franchise with a spectacular cash flow, and we have the opportunity to get inside on the ground floor and grab it. I will not have us known as the Los Angeles Tribune and Enchilada Company. May I say something? Uh, maybe we were hoaxed, but speaking as the legal counsel for this newspaper, it's my feeling that uh, maybe it wasn't such a bad... Norman, I think we have moved beyond that. We really should get back to the agenda. How long is this going to go on? You're sitting on a gold mine hatching nothing. When are we going to get some cash out of this paper? My devoted nephews. How I wish Margaret Sang had gotten to my sister in time. I'd like to point out that all our profits, uh, all our profits were put... Norman, please. Uh, Mr. Graff, what is your proposed city rim budget for next year? I need $246,000 more than last year. What? Are you serious? Motion to increase the city room budget by $246,000. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Hey. Hey. No. Hey. A proxy is representing 51% of the stock voting in favor. Motion is carried. Mr. Hill. Aunt uh, 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 Margaret. Move to adjourn. Second. Well, no, wait, there's more to do. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nay. Hey. Nay. Hey. Motion is carried. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Grant. I understand you're going to be my escort this evening. Oh, yeah. So what time would you like I'll me to... I'll pick you up at 7.30. Congratulations. Another stunning victory. Thank you, Colin. Petulance becomes you. Someday you're going to ring for your stooges on this board and no one will answer. It'll be the best thing that ever happened to you. Or to us. Hey, you think that's a nice way to talk to your aunt? Fred has a point. Why don't you take some of your money and go off and enjoy yourself? Swing a little. Go to Munich, pick up a duke. Take him to Paris, hmm, Aunt Maggie? I'm tired of telling you, Colin. I do not like to be called Maggie. I do not want to be called Maggie. Is that clear? Quite clear. The point is, Aunt Margaret, we have to make a living, too. How long do you expect us to do nothing? Quite a while, since that's what you seem to do best. Do I detect a couple of doses out of joint? I don't know them, but I don't think I like them. Then, Mr. Grant, you do know them. Oh, I don't think I dressed right. Well, since you look terrific. Oh, I... I assumed you knew that this was black tie. I didn't, but I am wearing one black sock. Where's the charming wife? She's in the ballroom having a hell of a time. Zubin Mehta asked her to dance. Oh, oh, oh. Well, then who's leading the band? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Double scotch, over. And I guess a glass of sherry. Uh, yeah, that one. Oops. I'm terribly sorry. The next one's on me. Oh, that's okay. Here we go. I'm Russell Granger. I've heard about you. I deny everything. It's a good idea. What I've heard isn't very flattering. Well, you should give me a chance to defend myself. Why don't you get me a drink? We'll talk about it. I think we'd better. What would you like? White wine. I'll make, a... make mine a scotch. That scotch? Yeah. Thanks. Hey, buddy, that's mine. It's going for a good cause. Hey, hey, listen. Oh. Well, have you met Russell Granger? This is Mr. Grant. Who Grant? Uh, Mr. Grant brought me this evening. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm just your city editor. You publish a paper? the Los Angeles Tribune. And Margaret Pinchon, I'll be damned. 
I thought you wanted the scotch for yourself. And I know it was for her. Looks like you and I are the only ones not a dress for these things. <laughs> yeah, I guess the rest of these guys didn't get the word it was brown tie. <laughs> Come on, Maggie. We've got some things to talk about. She doesn't like to be called that. Well, whatever gave you that idea? Yeah. Isn't that great? Look at her. I am. His name's Russell Granger. Nice guy. Nice guy. Mm -hmm. Russell Granger? Mm -hmm. He has swallowed up more newspapers, radio, and TV stations. Oh, Russell Granger. Oh. oh. I don't like it. I don't like him melting his butter all over her as if she were a pancake. Oh, lighten up, Charlie. It's good for her. I can't believe that anything about him can be good for her or the trip. Come on. He didn't even know who she was. Really? Mm hmm. I wonder. Excuse me, Joe. Joe Rossi, this is Russell Granger. Oh, how do you do? I've read your stuff, Mr. Rossi. When are these people going to submit your work to the Pulitzer Committee? Beats me. I ask him that every year. Russell, please. It's impossible now. Don't make things more difficult. I can't help it. I'm familiar with his work. How? You live in New York. I read 15 papers every day. I'd like to know what's going on. Oh, yeah? What's the temperature in Karachi? 87. I'm sorry. I was kidding. It's all right. I was guessing. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. This is Billy Newman, uh, uh. one of our general assignment reporters. How do you do? How do you do? Bet you've never heard of me. Let's see. Uh, uh, you, you wrote the piece about the young American Nazi. I appreciate good writers. Who knows? Someday I may have to hire one. <laughs> they make a cute couple. How many times do you suppose I was set at Bluebeard's wedding? Art Donovan, assistant city editor. How you doing, Art? Russell Granger. Russell Granger? How much you pay for that jacket? I'll come back, Charlie, when you can get your mind off them. No, stay. They're leaving. Financial Wilson. Sure, Charlie, right away. Yeah, I'll tell Ross. You're really in a sweat about them, aren't you? I just don't like them. And I trust them even less. You know something? It occurs to me that we haven't talked seriously in a long time. Four days? Oh, that doesn't count. It was after the Oakland game. We were both snockered. Well, we talked about God, life, ethics, the world situation. We talked about whether or not it mattered if Barbie Benton could sing. Oh, yeah. What did we decide? That didn't matter. See? There was a touch of philosophy. What is it about Granger that scares you so much? This. The Atlanta Post. This used to be a good newspaper before Granger got his hands on it. Let me see that. Truth about Einstein's suicide. Einstein didn't commit suicide. Oh, I know. That's the truth the newspaper reveals. Also, who's Jackie Onassis living with now? Mm -hmm. Answer son John John. Mm -hmm. This isn't journalism. It's distortion. It's sensationalism. It's a callous disregard of facts and of people's right to dignity. It's innuendo. It's sex. It's violence. Hi. Talking about me? Hey, Anna. You got any stock market tips for me? I got ten bucks. Yeah. Wait. Listen. I want the two of you to do a little quiet digging. I mean really quiet. Into what? Russell Granger. Specifically, any activity regarding the trip. You look pretty active out there. No, I don't mean towards Mrs. Pinchon. I mean towards this newspaper. Now, get on it. Hold it. I've got Rossi on a breaking story. That murder last night. Put Driscoll on it. I already put Rossi on it. That's Ross okay, Lou. No conflict. I can handle both. Whatever you find, you bring it back to me. Everything, no matter how trivial. And I'd like to hear from you at least once a day, maybe more, preferably. Well, just one thing. What are we supposed to be looking for? I think you'll know it when you see it. Okay, let's hear it. Charlie Hume, you're a paranoid jerk. Never a jerk, Charlie. What paranoid? I think it's great she's got a guy interested in her. And that she's interested in someone and something other than this paper. I do, too. Don't misunderstand me. It's something all her friends have wanted for her. But 
I just want to make sure there are no buts. I love Los Angeles at night. A huge velvet carpet studded with diamonds. Not circa. Oh, for God's sake. I get so weary of the tinsel image of Los Angeles. This is my city. Don't sell it short. No, I don't. I'm changing my opinion about your city, Maggie. Thanks to you and its people. It won't take much more to make me fall in love with your city. Russell? When I was just a girl, a very dear aunt of mine told me something I've always remembered. I had called on her unexpectedly one day and found she'd been crying. She was in her 50s. I expect maybe more. She wouldn't tell me what was wrong. Except to say, child, you never grow too old to be hurt. I have a reputation as a loner. There's a reason for that. Which I guess is my way of saying that men are afraid to be hurt too. And now I'll drive you home. You were, I believe, about to pour me some more champagne. Would you hold Mrs. Pinchard's course, please? What's the idea of telling her that? Sorry, but I, I have to talk to you about Russell Granger. Have you come to warn me about him, Mr. Hume? I've gotten some information that I think you ought to hear. Hold my calls. Mrs. Pinchard, you know that I'm a cautious man. I'm not the type to go off half-cocked. I was suspicious of the attention that he's been paying you. Mr. Hume, you flatter me. I'm sorry, this is so awkward. Look, I didn't mean to imply that... I know. Go on. No, I was suspicious, too, for a time. Information has reached me that, just maybe, his in intentions... His intentions, Mr. Hume? Look, Mrs. Pinchon, there have been phone calls from his company's research section concerning the trip's financial health. Now, this has always been Granger's initial move in any takeover that he's done. I'm sorry, but the facts are irrefutable. Julie, I'll take any calls now. now Mrs. Pinchon. The fact is, your information is correct. It, it is. Russell and I fell to talking about the trip. He wanted to warn me about any weak areas we might have to prevent any possible takeover, so he's put his research people on it for me. Mm-hmm. I see. Mr. Pinchon, did you ever hear the old folk story about the frog and the scorpion. The scorpion asked the frog to carry him on his back across the river. The frog was suspicious, but the scorpion said that he wouldn't hurt him because if he did, he'd drown too. The frog said, okay. In mid-river, the scorpion struck and they both went down. And the frog, with his last breath, said, why did you sting me? Now we'll both die. And the scorpion, with his last breath, said, it's my nature. Charlie, why does it take you so long to make a point? It's my nature. Charlie, Rossi just called in. He's been hanging around Granger's hotel, and he just saw Mrs. Pinchon's nephews go up in the elevator. You tell her. Gentlemen, thank you. Mr. Granger, I'm Collins. And Freddie. Well, 
What can I do for you? On the phone this morning, you were kind of vague. We wanted to talk to you face to face. Ah. You understand I wouldn't be seeing you except your Maggie Pinchon's nephews. I don't have much patience with vagueness. We'll be brief and direct. Good. It's about your aunt and me, right? You uh, want to know my intentions towards her. We're, uh, we're here on a business matter, Mr. Granger. Mr. Granger, we are prepared, under the right set of circumstances, to deliver into your hands 49% of the voting stock of the Los Angeles Tribune. You're members of the board. Mm -hmm. And you want me to come in and take over the newspaper your aunt publishes? You'd breathe life into that paper. Vitality. And if you decided you wanted to sell it, I mean, somewhere down the line, we'd get some meaningful return for our interest. What about your aunt? Well, it's not as if she wouldn't get anything if we eased her out. For your information, I care an awful lot for your aunt, and I hope she considers me a friend. To be brief and direct, you haul your Ivy League behinds out of here now before I throw you out on your buckles. Uh, Mr. Granger, I'm nice talking to you. Nice yes, uh, talking to you. Too, Thank you uh, for uh, seeing us, yes, Mr. Granger. Uh, I hope that you'll uh, consider uh, what we... Uh... <clears throat> Would you rather continue this later? Uh, no. Uh, where do we leave off? The Tribune's assets approach $23 million. Now, uh, all of it's involved... No, in no, I, I know all that. I promised her we'd go beyond facts and figures being an answer. Is this her position vulnerable? Yes, it is. There's an unusual situation at the Tribune. Now, the stockholders seem split right down the middle. There's 49% in her hands, 49% in militant uh, opposition, and a floating 2% voting with her, a uh, lawyer on the Trib staff. Now, our research people feel that his support is shaky at best. They suggest that she buy him out, quickly. Uh, that lawyer, the one who holds the swing proxies, what's his name? Norman McAllister. He's the key, then? Yes. What about the research package? Shall I send it on to Mrs. Pinchon? Now, uh, let's hold on to that for a while. Uh, I'd like to look it over. Oh, uh, Matthews, call this McAllister quietly. See if he'll meet me for lunch tomorrow. Yes, sir. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and Boss, he call in? No, I haven't heard from him. How can I pitch that murder for page one when all I'm looking at is yesterday's collection of facts? you still got time. Yeah, well, what's Rossi working on? The homicide or Charlie's suspicions about Russell Green? You're convinced Charlie's wrong about Green? Hell, I don't know about these things. What do you think? <laughs> do I look young for my age? That's because I don't think. I think. Come on, Donovan. We both know what you're always thinking about. Oh, yeah, but that's not hard thinking. That's fun thinking. Hmm. A fine lunch. Thank you, Mr. Granger. No, please. Russ, you keep forgetting. It's not that I forget, Mr. Granger. It's that I'm not quite sure exactly why I'm here. I prefer to keep a little distance between us. Norman. I'm going to trust you with a secret, a business secret. And if I'm wrong about you, it could cost me big. You're moving to take over the trip. I've underestimated you. Everyone does. Isn't that what you were saying earlier? Norman, I've got a lock on 49% of the stockholders' votes. Maggie Pinchon and her people have another 49%. That leaves a crucial 2%. Which, by a strange coincidence, I control. Exactly. And if at the right moment I swing that control over to you, then what? I don't know. What would you want? I have a dream, like everybody. I want to help formulate policy where it counts. I guess I'm talking about Charlie Hume's job, managing editor. 
Well, now it's you who are underestimating both yourself and the power you have. I am? Yes, I think you're worth more than you dream. There's a gap between managing editor and publisher that you could fill a job I'd create. How does senior editor sound to you? Senior editor? In charge of planning, development. Senior editor. I know how tough it's been for you getting your ideas across. If I didn't think you had ideas, I wouldn't waste my time. Well, I have given a lot of thought to some of the problems on this newspaper. I knew it. But it, there's too much gray on the front page. People today don't want that. There's not enough art. The, the graphics are old-fashioned. I'd change them. That's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of thinking I'd need. What do you say? Well, give me some time to digest this. I'll let you know. Grange has made his move. To what? Take us over? This is one time I didn't want to be right. I don't believe it. So help me, his team is in town. The same team that surfaced when he took over that paper in Houston and New York and Atlanta. They show up like buzzards, circling, checking out their dinner. I believe it. You want to believe it. He says, who makes you think he has the votes? Granger had lunch today with Norman McAllister. He's got the votes. That's the ball game. McAllister wouldn't sell out, not for lunch. He's loyal to the puppy. A puppy isn't loyal. When I first got my dog, she'd go to anyone who'd feed her. There have been rumors circulating around the building for days. You guys aren't helping any standing around whispering with long faces. I always wanted a long face. Don't you want to hear the rumors? We've heard them. Not this one. Russell Granger's about to take over the trip. Is that dumb or isn't it? <laughs> I can't believe what you're saying. Are we gonna roll over for this guy? No, no, no. What are we, are we sheep? He can buy and sell? No, no, no. We do not have to work for Russell Granger. I'm not gonna work for him. I'll stuff groceries in a bag before I work on the kind of newspaper this will become if Russell Granger owns it. Hey, 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 quiet down. Knock it off, knock it off. Ross, he's right, he's right. What am I saying? Okay, he's right. Russell Granger has cheapened every paper he's ever taken over. He's a perfect example of armpit journalism. And he ought to know. <laughs> I, I, I agree. But there's no guarantee this takeover will ever happen here. Do we need a guarantee, Lou? Just the possibility is enough for us to act. Hey, listen, people. We have a paper to put out. Look at this. Look at this, everybody. Do you want this to turn into this? No! no. Okay, okay, okay. Let's form a delegation and let the board know where we stand, how we feel. Let them know we're a family. What's a delegation going to do? The problem remains the same. We've got no clout. No clout? No clout? Look at the talent in this room. We're more than a family. We're a talented family. They can't put the paper out without us. <laughs> That's not clout. Votes are clout. How many people here have votes on the board? Sure. Talent, integrity, reason, and not enough votes to put in your eye. Listen to me, everyone. We have to stick together. Let's not panic, okay? If the time comes and Granger pulls this off, I'll lead you out of here. I promise. Right now, we have a paper to put out. Deadline is still 6 o'clock. It's what we're fighting for, isn't it? Huh? That's right. So come on, let's get it out. It's still our paper. City desk, Donovan. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Lou? It's her. She wants to know where the dummy of her front page is. This is Ben John. <clears throat> Lou Grant. Uh, the fact is that we haven't um, finished the budget meeting yet. The fact is we haven't begun it either. Mr. Girl, what's going on down there? Doesn't she know? Didn't anyone tell her? Charlie. I'm not the one for that job, believe me. I tried once before. Mr. Grant, have you fainted? Oh, sorry. Uh, I just knocked over my coffee. Oh, boy, is that a mess. <laughs> Donovan, oh, will you hand me that towel, please? Quickly. Use your tie. Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Binchon. Uh, how about half an hour? I should have something in half an hour. Rossi. 
Find out what you and Wilson have as if we were going to print it. Including Norman's lunch with Granger? Everything. Now, Rossi, make it tough. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. When I bought into a York... Of the a and &E returns to Lou Grant. A&D returns to Lou Grant. What's happening? Oh, they're still hassling. So far, it's a typical board meeting. Well, what are they going to see us? We've been waiting out there over an hour. I know. They said they'd call you when they're ready. Mm. I can hear shouting. Now I think you're going to hear some screaming. I've been instructed to have you wait, Mr. Granger. Fine. I can wait. Don't you realize what you're doing? Don't you know this will affect people far beyond this room? Or this building? You can't buy and sell people. In America, anyone can buy or sell anything at any time. My God, we're not talking about a side of beef. Every day, this paper informs. It alerts. It helps to fashion public opinion. It acts as a guide for politics, for the environment, the arts. All aspects of society. Don't any of you feel that responsibility? The motion before the board remains to remove Director Johnson without cause. Second the motion. This action is illegal, and you know it. Are we going to vote? Voters 51 percent in favor, 49 percent opposed. The motion is carried. Mr. Johnson, I don't know what to say. This is a very sad day for journalism in this city. Norman, to say that I'm disappointed. I now move that Russell Granger be elected to the board. Second the motion. Call for the vote, Aunt, Mag Aunt Margaret. Or do you relinquish the chair? We need legal advice. I know a lawyer who specializes in tender offer law. We should have called him. It's a little late for that. There are state takeover acts, possible SEC violations, antitrust violations. You forgot rape. They'll see you now. Good luck. I've never been at the death of a newspaper before. I didn't know it would feel this bad. I just want to keep saying that what you're doing, you, Norman, and you too, and especially you, Mr. Granger. What you're doing stinks. You're destroying something that money can't buy. We're not destroying anything. It's just some legal paper changing hands. Of course, you can all stay. Uh, your jobs are safe, I guarantee it. We won't work for you, Mr. Granger. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. It's Tim. I don't think this is so funny. What he's saying goes for all of us. Every last one of us. Well, it's understandable that the people on this paper are upset and distressed over a change in ownership. Now, I suggest that maybe we... Uh, thank you. I'll handle it. Mr. Granger, you may think you're buying this paper. But what this paper really is, is all the people who work on it and run it. And you'll find, if you pull this thing off, all you'll have is a building, some printing presses, and a lot of empty desks. Well, that's all I need to run a paper. 
I'd like you all to stay, but uh, I can fill those desks. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Thank you all. Well, we might as well get the vote over with. Is that the way it ends, Mr. Hume? I would think it deserves a better epitaph. I move that the Los Angeles Tribune Company accept the stock offer and merge with the corporation known as Granger Enterprises. Second. Will you please pass your ballots and proxies to Mr. Hume? I'll see that you get my resignation. Margaret, wait. You never called me Margaret. Sorry, but something off here. I'm going to have to count these again. Uh, what do you mean, off? He means that the yes vote only adds up to 49%. How do you know? Because I voted against the merger. He voted with us 10 minutes ago. How did I know he was going to switch his vote? <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, Maggie, let me be the one to say it. Good for you, Norman. Well, it'll be a long time before that shark strikes again. Charlie. I wonder if any of us could accept your feet with so much grace. For she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow, we're nobody can deny. Hey! Well, what can I say except what William Shakespeare said. Friends, am I with you? And love you all. Hey, 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 hey. And, and what can we say except what Romeo said? Mrs. Pinchon, you're okay. <laughs> Thank you. Each and every. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm just fine. Thank you, Mr. Grant. You ever go to a basketball game? I mean, if you ever want to go to a basketball game, maybe I can get some tickets. Oh, Mr. Grant, thank you. Thank you. That's the only sport I really hate. Norman, there is no way I can possibly thank you. Well, uh, yes, there is. I just left a memo on your desk concerning our editorial policy, if you would read it. Norman. What do you know about editorial policy? Oh, but, but on the other hand, we could talk about it over a drink. You do drink, don't you? Well, I uh, wouldn't be much of a newspaper man if I didn't, would I? Come along, Norman. It's a week of new programs and sizzling specials. A&E's premiere week has arrived. Don't miss it this week. Now, a family feud turns deadly on Columbo, next on A&E.